Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a nice interesting exponential equation. Maybe a quick and easy one you might be thinking but let's not give it away yet, okay? So in this case we do have an exponent that negates. Remember we did a problem for an exponent that doubles, for an exponent that triples, and we can also do some other numbers but this time we're going to be doing an exponent that negates i hope i haven't done this problem before because that kind of looks familiar to me if i did i apologize hopefully you'll learn something new today now to be able to solve this problem you can definitely guess and check right we can talk about it at the end but let's go ahead and go through the process do it the proper way the rigorous way, you know, whatever you want to call it. All right, great. So let's go ahead and write each number in polar form. Start with I. Remember, I on the argon plane will appear here with a modulus of 1, right? This is the imaginary, this is the real, and this is called the argon plane. So that's my I, and my negative I is going to be on the opposite side. So if you think about these two numbers, this is going to make a pi over 2 radians. This is going to make a negative pi over 2 radians. But you could also consider this to be a different number or angle, which is a 3 pi over 2 radians. Okay? 3 pi over 2 is usually not considered the principal argument because it's not between negative pi and pi, obviously, right? but you can also use it to represent your number. So let's go ahead and see how this plays out and then we're gonna check our answer with common sense, okay? I'll tell you what it's all about. But that's what the video is, an exponent that negates. So let's go ahead and plug these in. We have i as, did we write it? No, not really, let's go ahead and do that here. i can be written as e to the power i pi over two. Because I, pi over 2 is the argument for i, right? But wait a minute. You're allowed to add multiples of 2 pi. So I can actually add 2 pi n, can't I? We'll check that at the end, don't worry. So let's just go ahead and write i that way. And negative i, you could just put a minus sign in front of the e, but you kind of want e to absorb it so that you can solve this equation. Obviously, that would probably be interesting if we proceeded with something like this and see what happens, uh, but I'm going to leave that uh, as an exercise for you, okay? So let me proceed with what I planned, negative i is going to be e to the power i times negative pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. By the way, n and k are integers. You knew that, right? Okay. I still wanted to say it, hopefully. Now, let's go ahead and plug these in. I will be replaced with that, e to the power i pi over 2 plus 2 pi n, and on the right hand side I have e to the power i negative pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. Of course they're not equal. Uh, we're going to raise the left hand side to the power z, and we expect to get the right hand side, right? Wishful thinking. Okay. Now, how do you solve for z? First of all, we have to distribute and multiply, and then once you multiply, you're going to get the e exponents equal to each other, so let me go ahead and Cut down a step there, I hope you don't mind. So we can go ahead and proceed like this. Obviously n and k don't have to be the same integers. What happens if they are the same? That's a good question, right? We can also look at that. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out i because i is not 0. It's like i am not 0. No, i is not 0. You're not i. I am. i is a number. Okay. If I say i am a number, that would be false, right? So z from here will be a quotient, so it's going to be like negative pi over 2 plus 2 pi k divided by pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. Now what happens first of all if k and n are equal? That would be a good question, right? Even if k and n are both 0, that would be an interesting case. Let's go ahead and look at some simple cases. If they're both 0, then we're going to have like an interesting ratio of negative pi over 2 divided by pi over 2. Z would be negative 1. But is negative 1 a solution? Let's check it out. I to the power Z equals what? We don't know, right? 
z is negative 1, i to the power negative 1 is 1 over i, but you have to multiply by the conjugate, which is not i, by the way, it's negative i. That will be negative i squared, which is 1, and that will give you negative i. Yay! We got a solution, z equals negative 1 is definitely a solution, and it's actually a real, real solution. A very real solution, right? You wouldn't be expecting, were you? Or are the all the solutions real? Good question. You can also test this out, a to the i to the power a plus b i equals negative i, and try to find the values of a and b from here. Maybe if we have, if we have some time left towards the end, we can take a look at it too. Okay, now so far we got this expression, but that's too general, and do you think it is always going to work? So let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. I would probably just multiply everything by 2, and that would give me negative pi plus 4 pi k divided by pi plus 4 pi n. And then I would probably just factor out a pi. That will give me 4k minus 1 divided by pi 4n plus 1. Uh-oh. What does that mean? Pi cancels out, and we get something simple. So this tells you that the solutions are real numbers. Yes, because k and n are integers, 4k minus 1 and 4n plus 1 are real numbers, so we've got a real number. Interesting, right? You take a i to a real power, and it just negates. Okay, cool. You probably knew that already, but let's just pretend we don't. Now, is this a real solution? I mean, they're real, but is there, are these really solutions? <laughs> so I think we have some extra terms, but let's go ahead and do this. Replace k with 1 and n with 1. What does that give you? Because you can definitely experiment with this, right? This is z, by the way. This gives you z equals 4 minus 1, 3 divided by 5. Okay, great. So z equals 3 fifths is a rational number. Do you think i to the power 3 fifths is going to equal negative i? That's a very good question, right? So here's the problem. i to the power 3 over 5 is not single-valued. It's multi-valued. Because this basically means the fifth root of i to the third power or the third power of i and then the fifth root of that. i to the third is negative i, so one fifth roots of negative i is the same thing as fifth roots of i cubed. Make sense? Okay, I hope it does. When uh, 3 and 5 have a common factor, like 6 over 10, that will be problematic. You can't do that. So that's very problematic. Don't get into that. But in this case, yes, one of the values of this number is negative i, but can we really count that as a solution? Probably not. So I think n should not be there, and I think a valid solution would probably be something like z equals 4k minus 1, because if n is equal to 0, then you're going to have a 1 at the bottom. But in this case, we are going to find something interesting, because what if I replace k with something else like n m plus 1? If k is an integer, m is an integer, why am I doing it? I'll show you now. Why? Because I don't want to have a negative number. 4m plus 4 minus 1 is a 3. Now, it's good to have a 3 at the end, a positive number, because, come on, this is like modular arithmetic, and I want a remainder of 3, which is a positive remainder. Now, why does this work? Because i to the power 4m plus 3 is i to the power 4m times i to the power 3. i to the power 4m is i to the 4 to the m. Remember, m is an integer, i to the 4 is 1, 1 to the power m is 1, i cubed is negative i, and yes, success, we have Houston, we have a solution. <laughs> nice. So this is always going to work. I, I, I think n should not be there or n should be 0. What do you think? Let us know in the comment section down below. But if I were solving this problem with the, what's it called? The second method, maybe, like intuitively, I would think about this. i to the first is i i to the second is negative 1, i to the third is negative i, i to the fourth is 1. Uh-oh, we have a solution that is i cubed. But of course, z is not just going to be the third power because we can always multiply by a multiple of 4. Make sense? And in this case, z happens to be 4k plus 3 or 4m plus 3. It doesn't matter, the variable is, they just vary, right? So it doesn't matter, you can vary it. 
And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.